Hi, I'm Michael Goddard. In this uh, episode, we're going to be talking about the gyro sensor here on the EV3, um, how to use it to make accurate right turns using the LEGO uh, Mindstorm classroom application. So, let's get started. Just wanted to kind of start off and show you that uh, it is possible to get uh, the EV3 Mindstorm robot to do right turns uh, using the gyro sensor here. Um, this square here pretty much 90 degrees I think I'm off by about two or three degrees on the actual uh, lines there but anyway uh, this is sort of proof that what I'm about to show you code wise actually does make sense uh, in case you want to get a close in look at my code there it is we're gonna talk about this and some other things um, as well I, this one's kind of a little bit uh, hasty because you can see I've got that 85 rather than 90 we're gonna talk about all that uh, here in this video. I want to talk about the robot itself. I built this using the instructions on the EV3 classroom app. I just went over here to the unit plans, uh, the robot trainer as you can see, and then I think it's the uh, very first instructions set here. Uh, you can build that and then uh, farther on down the line it talks about angles and patterns and that's where they add the gyro sensor. I just followed those instructions and put the gyro sensor attachment right on there. That's uh, one of the main things we'll talk about is that that gyro sensor needs to be secure. Um, and I mean, you could even just sort of bolt it here to the side there. So anyway, um, let's go look at some code. All right, so talking about the gyro sensor. Uh, specifically, we're going to be uh, making uh, 90 degree turns accurately. And I've got some tips on using the, the gyro sensor and some uh, troubleshooting things. If it's not working properly, uh, feel free to skip to the end where I've got the suggestions on what to do if it's not turning properly. Uh, real quickly, we want to talk about what does the gyro sensor measure? Well, it measures um, rotation around one axis. So if you were to uh, like stick a pencil here uh, so that its tip or the eraser was touching that circle there, then that would tell you the axis around which um, the gyro sensor is measuring rotation. And according to the documentation, the sensor is accurate within plus or minus three degrees. So that's something that we'll definitely take into consideration here. Um, some uh, tips that I found uh, to make things uh, successful. Uh, when you attach the sensor to the bot, make sure that it's secure. Uh, try putting it, try to avoid putting it maybe somewhere on the edge or right above a wheel or anything where it's going to bounce around during movement. Um, the more shaking that it experiences, the more likely it is to just kind of start giving some really weird uh, sensor readings. Uh, when you do plug it in to the robot, keep the bot and the sensor still for at least three seconds. Um, and then uh, try to avoid quick movement of the bot and the sensor when you're carrying it. Um, if not, you're gonna have to do a hardware reset of that sensor. And you might say, well, what's a hardware reset? Well, a hardware reset is basically you unplug it and then you plug it back in again. So uh, this is what happens if your readings are increasing or decreasing even when the whole robot is not moving. Okay, so you're just looking uh, at the screen and you're looking at the, the values and they're just constantly increasing or decreasing. So put the bot on a stable surface, unplug the gyro sensor, count to five, plug it back in, and then keep both the bot and the gyro sensor motionless for another five seconds. And if that doesn't work, try it again. If it really gets bad, you can... Uh, restart the you know the robot as always it's I have never had any student or myself um, have an issue with the gyro sensor that wasn't solved by that or maybe it was a code problem um, I also recommend a software reset um, pretty much almost any time you want the gyro to turn and by software reset we're resetting the angle and uh, to do that you'll use the reset angle block in your code to zero it out um, to the sensor read to it to a zero uh, value there. So um, here's just some general tips. Uh, do a hardware reset before you run your program. So like at the, you know, before you actually download your code, and if you, this, especially if this is like for a, some sort of competition type of situation, uh, reset that gyro sensor, and then do a software reset in your program. In fact, I I'm going to recommend you do that uh, almost before every turn that needs. Uh, to be measured. Uh, turn slowly uh, for really accurate turns and so maybe around 20-25% or even a little bit slower but of course that that does eat into your time. Uh, what I have found is that pivot turns are more accurate than arc turns or zero radius turns um, 
I haven't made them yet, but I plan on doing a, a future video on those three types of turns. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, and a big one, don't use the, the, the sensor reading like a wait until angle equals 90 because um, what's going on inside the robot is it's getting the sensor readings and then it's also sending um, uh, electricity in the form of current to the motors. And if it is waiting until the angle equals 90, well, then the angle may jump from 88.3 up to like 90.1 or 90.8 or something like that and, and never actually hit dead on 90 degrees um, or negative 90. I, that's, this should say less than 90, uh, less than negative 90 typo right there. Sorry about that. Uh, so always use a, an, an inequality here rather than the equal statement. So here it is. This one will, you'll turn at least 90 degrees. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, so this is sort of the, the, the first first attempt here. So when the program starts, uh, reset the angle. This is that software reset that I was talking about. So it's going to set it back to, back to zero. And then uh, this is a pivot turn where you're sending all of the, the power to one of the two motors here. So I've got, in this case, it's going to the left motor and uh, zero uh, power going to the other motor. And so it's going to do a pivot turn. And then we're going to wait until the angle is greater than 90 degrees and then stop moving. Now the problem is, as I mentioned before, especially if you're going at 100, the robot is going to turn so quickly that it's going to blow past 90 and then it will finally stop when it's maybe at 95, 98, maybe even almost 100. Okay, so that's uh, that's problematic. The, the first way of fixing that would just be to ch drop this 100% speed on one of the motors down to maybe 50, maybe 25, maybe 40, somewhere around there. Um, you can experiment with those values until you get a good, uh, nice 90 degree turn. Um, and there's some other options as well. Um, I think if, if I look back here in the code that I was running um, earlier, uh, I, a very quick fix is just instead of saying 90 degrees, you could say 85 degrees um, or 88. Now that's not going to be um, obviously as exact, but you, if you remember, you do have that plus or minus uh, three degrees there, uh, and it's in this case, um, it's going to probably well, it's, it's it's unlikely that it's going to go less than 85 at all. In fact, it, it pretty much won't. So it's going to stop, you know, at 86, 87. 88 and then maybe just to get just a one or two more degrees past that um, just based on by the time that the, the instructions uh, get to the motors so anyway so 85 it, once again this depends on you know how far back down you go into the 80s is going to depend on uh, your movement speed it's going to depend on uh, where your wheels are the size of your wheels how far apart they are uh, with this particular bot this is what worked good for me. I'll talk some more about the other code that I have here in a second. But that's sort of uh, the most basic approach and wanted to address that. Um, here is another way, um, and you can uh, look at this and start to experiment based on this. Um, the idea here is for a more accurate turn, uh, go fast for 80 degrees, then slow for the rest, which would be, you know, obviously something less than than 10 degrees. So uh, here when my program starts, I'm resetting the angle. I'm going to start moving. Now this is somewhat fast, 40% 40, uh, 40 speed. And then I'm going to wait until the uh, angle is greater than 80 degrees. So obviously it's going to be somewhere around maybe 81, 82, 83, 84, uh, maybe even up to 85 or 86. At that point, I'm going to stop moving. Um, I found it very helpful sometimes uh, between these codes just to wait for half a second, just to let everything just kind of settle down uh, momentarily. Then, I, just as sort of an extreme example, I'm going to continue that same type of turn, so still pivot turn, but 1% power going to the left motor here. And then I'm going to wait until the angle is greater than 89 degrees. Um, and so if I do that, then I've, I've had success with this stopping right at 90 degrees. Now the problem is the, the, the gyro sensor is saying 90 degrees, but if you remember, there's still a you know, plus or minus um, 3 degrees error on that. Um, and so even though, yeah, it is stopping 90 degrees, it might, um, it might be 91 or 92. Now it's, it's going to show 90 degrees, but that's, you know, you'd have to get out some sort of, uh, some other equipment to be able to measure uh, what is that, what is accurate what it is actually at, so some sort of like a protractor. 
um, before and after it. So anyway, so then I've got stop moving and then I had another weight block. So that's, this is, this is a way of trying to get a 90 degree turn if you want to go, you know, for the, the large part of the angle you're going uh, faster and then for the smaller part of the angle you're going slower. Um, so just to kind of show you what I did with mine, uh, if you remember at the beginning there, the robot was moving straight for a, a set period of time. Um, and then it would stop, obviously. And at that point, I would reset the angle. And I just had to wait for half a second just for everything. For it, to, it was still kind of um, shuddering, so to speak, you know, kind of shaking just a little bit. Then it would, it would stop. Um, and then I would start moving. I had mine at 25%. It doesn't take too long to turn 90 degrees. And then based on just some experiments that I did real briefly, um, 85 degrees seemed to get the robot to turn around that square at a pretty much 90 degree angles there. And then after um, after we hit that greater than 85 degrees, stop moving, then wait for a second. And if you don't wait for a second there, it will it stops moving and then immediately comes around here and starts um, into the, the next command, which can move both of them. And I've found that if I if I don't have that weight right there, then the, uh, the brake doesn't have enough time to properly engage and so one of the wheels is still spinning um, uh, the, the one that was was doing the turn and then as a result it uh, it just it kind of starts uh, that that wheel is already spinning a little bit and that causes the robot to, to drift a little bit uh, in the direction that it was already turning so anyway I've got that zoomed in and you've seen that sufficiently long enough that if you want to utilize that you can a um, couple of problems uh, that you may encounter if the robot doesn't stop turning okay well number one check the sensor port make sure that the you know the port that you're reading uh, here in my in my case it's it's port 2 make sure that that is the port where you are actually plugged into so you can check that up here on the the port view to make sure you've got the right port um, again uh, make sure you're not using equal to 90 degrees. Change it to greater than 90 or less than negative 90, depending on uh, whether or not you're doing a, a turn to the right or a turn to the left. And I'll let you kind of experiment and see which is appropriate for, for your robot. Um, as I mentioned earlier, maybe your robot stops at 93 degrees or 95 degrees or higher than that or uh, the negative counterparts there. Um, you could decrease the turn speed. You um, you could change your what's called your sentinel value. Um, so for my case, it was the 80. I changed it to 85 degrees. But you could change this number right here, which is your greater than or less than value. It's called your sentinel, sentinel value. Um, or you could change your move speed. Those are uh, two suggested options. Um, as mentioned before, if your gyro sensor keeps increasing or decreasing, even when the bot is still, unplug it, wait five seconds, plug it back in. And then um, something else that is sort of a sticky problem is, you know, maybe you say my code is perfect, but it won't turn properly. And this normally happens if your uh, turn code is um, part of a sequence of other steps where you have the robot moving forward for a few seconds or a few rotations, or whatever, and then you want to turn 90 degrees, then you want to go, then you want to go straight for a little bit more, then you want to turn again. Um, make sure that you're stopping the motors. Wait, half a second is plenty. Um, software reset the gyro and then wait again. That's a little bit of an overkill here. I have uh, my wait blocks uh, just sort of after the after the reset or at any time I stop, you know, sort of like any any movement that I'm making, I'm going to put a put a wait block for half a second. So move moving moving forward, even after it comes to a complete stop, I'm going to wait for half a second. I'm turning and then I'm stop moving. I'm going to wait for another half of a second. So I found that those are um, very helpful and, and just adding those in there can, can solve some of the problems. All right. So uh, good luck with your uh, 90 degree turns. So just in reverse order, we got all those different things we talked about. Uh, so please leave a comment uh, if you have any questions or anything like that. Um, as always, like and subscribe. This is Mr. Goddard for Mr. Goddard STEM Tutorials. Thanks for watching.